Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I'm your host, Laura Reeves, and we are here at the AKC National Championship Dog Show brought to you by Royal Canin. And Pure Dog Talk, of course, brought to you by Era Media Group. And we have super special guest today. We have Piglet and her <laughs> friend, Lori Wells. Yes. And Piglet and Lori were ACE Award winners last night presented with the AKC Humane Fund Award for Canine Excellence. That's a mouthful. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's very good. <laughs> okay, and uh, Piglet and Lori won their award in the search and rescue category, correct? Yes, that's correct. And tell us about Piglet. Well, Piglet is a <laughs> lover. A lover. <laughs> Seven-year-old Catahoula leopard dog. The state dog of Louisiana. She's gonna love her mama. Yes. Yes. And she's been doing search and rescue since she was a wee little wee taught. Okay. Yes. And she does a very, very special and I think powerful type of search and rescue. Yes. She actually is trained and certified to uh, discover human remains. Right. Right. So hard work for her, for you. It is hard and it's emotional. Right. But it's a fabulous answer for a family yes. that's grieving and in yes. need. And a tremendous service that you provide communities. Yes, and all volunteer. Wow, that is that is amazing. And you're based in Southern California? Yes, absolutely. Excellent, and you, from what I understand, kind of do that whole West Coast sort of region on call-outs. The Northwestern states, yes. My husband and I are connected with a couple of different teams at Search that okay. way, and uh, yes. Wherever, well, actually, wherever the need is, wow. our organization will deploy to whoever needs our help. Wow. And so talk to me a little bit about this award. This means an awful lot to you. You, you were telling me on off air <laughs> that this was kind of emotional. It, it is incredibly emotional, humbling. I, 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 when they told me I won, I was just overwhelmed. It's, it's such a huge honor. Right. For the American Kennel Club, first of all, to even recognize this, and with the support of Royal Canin, right. and you can you can that with dog food, right. it's that's amazing, unbelievable. Uh, we're we're just, like I say, so humbled. And how many human remains search dogs are there roughly? You think in the United States? Oh, because I know this is a very specialized section of search and rescue in general. Yes, in the United States, I'm not real sure, um, but it it's building. People mm -hmm. are seeing the need for this sort mm -hmm. of detection. Um, but I do know there's only a handful of Catahoulas out there working. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So, the, yeah. This is a, what, half a dozen even? At the most, yeah. Wow. wow. Yes. And so tell us about the Catahoula leopard dog, because I just think they're cool, and I like to say Catahoula. <laughs> <I just laughs> it is a fun word. It yeah. definitely is a fun word. Totally. Well, they are the state dog of Louisiana. Yes. Bred originally to herd and hunt. Okay. The uh, American Indians developed the breed in the early 1800s. There's a few breeds that went into the making of this, the uh, Beauceron, a mm -hmm. uh, little bit of hound dog, Spanish mm -hmm. Mastiffs, and Red Wolf. Interesting. Yeah. And, and so you've been able to go back and do like DNA genetic markers and check all this. I did not do it. Not but you there's, personally. It's but been there's done. a lot of people that wow. have. Yes, it's, Very it's well cool. documented. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so how were the Catahoula dogs particularly adapted to doing search and rescue work? What do they bring that makes them particularly good at the job? Well, any good search dog has to have a phenomenal hunt drive, mm -hmm. hunt prey drive. Right. And they do, since they right. were bred to herd right. and hunt. And Piglet actually comes from cow dog lines because okay. Catahoulas are cow dogs or are hog dogs. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, the cow dog's a little more settled, a little more sensible minded. Interesting. Yeah. And so the cow dogs and then the hog dogs? Hog dogs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Well, that was originally because they're wild they? hogs in the swamplands. Okay, so they lands. hunted boar or something yeah, like that. Wild okay. boar. Wow. Wow. And so they have the hunting drive. They, they're they agile. Yes. Right? So they have to be able to go all day, I think. Yeah, the stamina is definitely a plus in search and rescue. Although when we deploy, usually our shift is only about three or four hours because it's a lot. It's an intense right. three or four hours. Bring the dog out of the field. They get a break for an hour or more. 
and then we go back and go back and do it again. So I, I'm saying half a dozen, three or four hour a day shifts, that's very intense. And for you as a handler. Yes. Talk to me about that. <laughs> yes. Well, we have to stay as fit as possible and we have to be smart and hydrate and mm -hmm. love on our dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as the dog loves you, it seems yeah. like everything else is gonna be okay. Absolutely. All right, and so can you talk about any of your successful searches, things that Piglet has been very um, tough situations? There were a few examples, so well, uh, one of your big searches. One that I love, and I think it's a great story, is my husband and I, my husband does this as well, this is mm -hmm. how we met, doing okay. search and rescue. Okay. Uh, we were deployed to Mount Charleston in Las Vegas okay. with a, uh, a missing airman and they found the vehicle but we arrive and they say and we asked where our search area was and they said basically all of Mount Charleston that's a big area so it was huge so we we're like okay we have trailing dogs as well mm -hmm. sent specifics so we got sent articles from the missing man right and we deployed the trailing dogs in all areas and we narrowed down the search area to this mountain and oh we got some ground pounders with us, grabbed Piglet because he was expected to mm. not be alive, mm. and she went up and got him. Wow. So it and was how a long huge effort. had that been? How long of a trail? How old of a trail? Uh, two days. Wow. And the whole process of us working um, was about four hours to conclusion. Okay. So, so not And bad. now I saw, I read that she also does water search, which is a, another specific type of search and rescue that is also particularly difficult. Absolutely. Um, we actually had a search in California for a drowning victim mm -hmm. and they had been out searching for seven days, law enforcement, and finally called the dog in on day eight and through a lot of grid patterns and right. going over that lake, right. uh, she said where he was and sure enough, he was there. Okay, and so can we talk a little tiny bit about what it takes to, I, I mean, I know there's books about this, but give us, our listeners, some ideas about what it takes to train a dog to this level. It takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. A lot of hard work, a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It's um, expensive and, wow. okay. and just the mileage driven, but it's a bond. Mm -hmm. with your dog mm -hmm. and there are a lot of books but there's nothing like doing it doing it yeah you right. can read all you want but you got to get out there and do it okay so we have talked on our program about the scent work mm -hmm. the new scent work um, competition she could be in my lap it'd be just <laughs> fine um, and so do, would you think of that as kind of like a place to start if you wanted to go on later to do more advanced search and rescue type work or is that well, not the right foundation there's pros and cons for that because what okay. we don't want our dogs to do, especially is look for food or treats or things like that. Okay. It's so, human scent. Okay. So you are, how are we training? You want to find human scent. What is their reward for having found human scent? Well, Just having found it? No. A lot of people do use treats once you get there as right. opposed to the trail leading right. there. Um, toy drive. A lot of, a lot of dogs tug. want that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throw the ball. Tug. Mm -hmm. Mine, I've always trained them to want mommy's love. They are so happy they've made me happy. So just okay. a whole bunch of love, because I've always got that. Right. Handlers forget their toys and treats and things. Right. So right. I've always got love. And that's how I do it. And I see how she is interacting with you. It tells me that she's wanting to make sure that you're okay. Yes, well in a few <laughs> of my interviews, it, it, they struck some emotional <laughs> right, levels, right? And she she was yes. a little concerned. Yes, and, and this is and I'm she, seeing yeah. her respond to that, yeah. which I think is really really amazing. And this is a question that I don't know if you can answer, but I I wonder if the dogs feel the intensity and the emotion that goes with this particular work. Yes. Absolutely, they, they, oh, see, and now sure, you're upset <laughs> and she's is. upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. They know. No, they're, they're very intuitive. Yeah. I mean, and right. the relationship and the bond that you make and build with these guys through the training right. and everything, it, you're in tune with each other. And they're not dogs that we trade in to put in the kennel. You right. know, a lot of other organizations mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. These are our... I don't want to call them pets, 
catch and give companions. Yeah, companions. Um, and, and they're just family. Right. And so how many search and rescue dogs have you worked with in your time? You said you and your husband met this way, so I assume this is something you've been doing for a while. Yes, I'm on my fifth trailing dog. Oh my goodness. And she is my first human remains detection dog. Wow. And my husband's on his third trailing dog. Wow. And do you so. primarily work with the Catahoula dogs or you've worked with other breeds? We have Catahoulas and Bloodhounds. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love Bloodhound man trailing. I've talked to a couple of different people about it and I had a, one of my early mentors did Bloodhound man trailing and it's, it's so it's amazing. amazing. Totally so amazing. amazing. So just because you're someone who does like full on active search and rescue with bloodhounds, talk to our listeners about that incredible bloodhoundness that is so <laughs> much, I mean, takes any other dog scenting ability and multiply it times 20 gazillion. When they're on scent, they're on scent and right. they go and you better just keep up. Mm -hmm. They go, just mm -hmm. that go forward, um, which actually can get them in trouble yes. because they don't know their limitations and, and they, it, they don't know to stop. Right. And take a break so we have to make sure they do that and have some water and and just chill out for a minute and then go back and they go right back wow. there's no harm to stopping no. them along no. that trail they they, they they're not going to forget it people <laughs> think they do no they no. don't they mm -hmm. absolutely know what's the oldest and and again this is from my early history as a kid oldest trail you've worked with a bloodhound Personally, we've worked usually between seven and 10 days, mm -hmm. just because, right. you know, to, right. to check, because our training is all ages of trails, right. all surfaces, right. so, and all weather conditions. Right. So we have a gauge. We, we know how they mm -hmm. respond to all of those um, scenarios. And then we can tell how they work those scenarios and know what they're telling us right. in each scenario. And that is so important. You talked about the bond. Right, so being able to read your dog and being able to know what they're telling you. Yes. Absolutely critical. Because we have nothing without that. Right, right. And have you worked with the Bloodhounds? My understanding is they, are they still the only dogs that are allowed to testify in court? That they're- No, okay, that has is that actually, changed? yes. That okay, so tell me about that. Up. Because I think that's really such a powerful thing. Um, yes, I actually have a friend that uh, retired law enforcement uh, trailing dog handler mm -hmm. used his uh, blue tick coon hound. It's been interesting. In and I think some shepherds have been in court. I almost got called into court, even though I'm a volunteer. Right. Uh, her uncle, my very first Catahoula and trailing dog, we solved the case and we were on standby to go to court. Wow. They were going to listen. So wow. I think that's really relaxed. Interesting. I love that. And it's just once again, when we talk about purebred dogs and we talk about predictability and we talk about preservation breeding, you tie it all together right here. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? This, it gives me shivers. I mean, I literally have goosebumps because it is so powerful how much these animals can do for us. Absolutely. And they will do mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. there, there's no parameters there. It's it, it makes me emotional, just mm -hmm. the love right, right, and the trust. And, and that they are so involved in society and they have such an impact yeah. in society that maybe people don't even understand. Exactly, wow. exactly. Very, very cool. We definitely need to understand. Right, and I don't think we've really plumbed the depths of what <laughs> dogs can do. I mean, think no. about the dogs that are sniffing out cancer cells. Exactly. I, exactly. You know, I mean, where can they, you know, I just think that is so, to me, this is like one of the coolest parts of that human canine partnership that we have in this world. Oh, yes. Any medical condition. Right. It's the work that's going right. into that. Mm -hmm. And I Tons actually have research. a bloodhound that's going to be doing that. Really? For someone in Very Vegas. cool. Yeah. So it's, what else did I hear about? It was, can't, there was diabetes maybe? Yes. Something. Is it, is it diabetes? And any, any of? disease that is a, a blood origin that changes changes the blood chemistry they can check that yes they can interesting yeah. wow I, I to me that's just fascinating fascinating stuff yes All who right. needs doctors right? <laughs> not me apparently <laughs> <laughs> um and so going forward mm -hmm. your plans for the future with piglet is she is she still good she's seven she's, she's still seven. solid she's still sound she's still working 
Absolutely, all of our dogs ended up around 13 years of age, just done. You know, okay. they, they, yeah. So they were just not able to do it anymore. So they, but they worked well, right well, up until that. that, and that's amazing that they're that long lived and that healthy into the working age. Yes, it's very absolutely cool. very cool. And so you are a volunteer. Yes. Do you have like a nonprofit? Do you have okay? So we could provide our listeners with a link. If they could make donations. <laughs> I would love to. Okay. Um, my organization is Search Dogs 24-7. Okay. And we have a Facebook page. Very good. And the number's 24-7. And we also have a website, searchdogs247.org. And we will make sure that there is a link on the website so that people can go check it out and get more information. It would be incredibly helpful. And we're happy to do it. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us, Lori. Absolutely. My pleasure. Excellent. <laughs>